I'd like to dedicate this video to Lou Reed, who just died yesterday. <clears throat> this video is about circles, and although you may like circles, you know, tape comes in that shape and such, they are completely unnatural. Circles are really weird. Take, for instance, this trucker. I have a trucker here, and unlike most truckers, if you push down his head and let go, he'll drive away. That's cool. See this trucker? You push down his head, and let go, and he drives away. And I like to ask my students, how can I make the trucker go in a circle? And sometimes they say, pull the string, pull the string, the string's wrapped around his neck. This is not something you should do with a real trucker. But if I pull the string and push down his head and he drives away, he just stops driving. He can't get away from me anymore. Now, that's not really cool. What is interesting though, <laughs> I'm kind of being a punk, how would we pull the string to make this trucker go in a circle like that? That's interesting. I like, he's facing that way, but I'm pulling the string down. So what do you think he's gonna do? Well, he's not gonna be able to go straight, so he starts to turn. Whoa, easy now, trucker. How about that? Like that, yeah, try again, uh-huh. And what I'm noticing is, he's turning in a direction, oh, that's very interesting. He's turning around in a circle. I took this from my son, it's not exactly perfect anymore. But what I'm noticing is that when he's going one direction and the force is going in a normal direction to that, let's see if we can make ourselves a little sketch, then the trucker turns. So here's what I've got. I say if I want a circular path, then I could put a trucker right here and say that the instantaneous velocity of the trucker is that direction. And I might even call that the tangential velocity. Tangential is a nice word, fun pronunciation. Tangential, oh look, I see the word tangent right there. Yeah, tangent means that there's this line that's just kind of barely touching right there. Sure, so that's a tangent line. This is pronounced tangential, and it's the direction that is in a tangent direction to the circular path. And then the thing is, the string was always pulling the trucker inward. And if you take Latin, then perhaps you've learned another word for inward. Maybe we can think of another word for inward. But I'm gonna say that this force is always pointed inward. So if I make another, like a phantom truck right here, phantom ice cream truck, anybody with me there? Then I might say, well, let's say this is uniform circular motion, so it's not gonna be speeding up or slowing down. Then V tangential would be that direction at that time. Notice that it's still tangent to the circle, so at all times, the velocity is telling us where the truck is about to be, so it goes from here to here. But notice it had to turn a little bit, and the direction it turned was always inward. So I'm gonna draw that force again towards the center of the circle. And it's time to review your Latin. Towards the center of the circle means centripetal. Maybe I should say centripetal means towards the center of the circle. This root right here is of course the center. And this root right here means to seek. So it's center seeking. A center seeking force is a force that points towards the center. So when I say towards the center, I could just as easily say centripetal. So there is a centripetal force. In fact, there must be because things don't like to move in circles. Things like to move in straight lines. If you fully understand Newton's first law, Newton's first law, if you understand this, then you will believe with me that circles are utterly unnatural and require not just a force, but a force that is continuously changing its direction. Now that's interesting. I got a little challenge for you. Here's the challenge. Here are five situations where things are going around in a circle. And I want you to think of the reason those things go around in a circle because you know that Earth would rather go in a straight line and the lasso would rather go in a straight line and a kid would rather go in a straight line even when they're in a barrel of fun kind of Tom's Twister kind of ride and a car would prefer to go in a straight line but you can make it turn on flat ground. So why does it turn, etc.? Why could it go in a circle? And the car also likes to turn even, oh, a steeply banked slope. We might even have no friction at all but the car could still turn and that might be for a different reason. So those are challenges I want you guys to address. Tell me the reason that all of these go in a circle because circles are so unnatural they require a justification. What if this truck were right here? 
the truck were right here, it'd be going that direction, that'd be my tangential speed, and it would be accelerating, oh, it would be accelerating this direction, and I'm gonna write F sub C right there for centripetal force, and guess what? Centripetal force is a net force. Centripetal force is a net force, and so I should never draw it on a free body diagram. Hang on, Doc, did you just draw a centripetal force on a free body diagram? No, this is obviously not a free body diagram because it's got velocity on it also. This is just a sketch of what happens when things go in a circle. So centripetal force is a net force, which means cool things like if the net force is a centripetal force, then that's going to be mass times the acceleration. But guess what? If the acceleration is in the direction of the net force, which is in the direction of the centripetal force, centripetal means towards the center, so the acceleration will also be towards the center. Ah, so let's take this equation that we just figured out over here. I'm gonna say centripetal force is mass times centripetal acceleration. And <clears throat> there's a little interesting exercise you can do. If you've got things like the radius of a circular path, and you've got the, let's say you've got the tangential speed right here, VT, and you're trying to find the acceleration, that might be interesting, it'd be nice to find an equation. I wanna do something called dimensional analysis with you. What if you think about the units for VT, that's meters per second, and the units for radius, well those are gonna be meters. The units for acceleration, this is our goal here, we're trying to find an acceleration equation, and the units are supposed to be meters per second squared. Word. So the logical problem is this. How do I combine these units and those units to get those units? Uh-huh, and I think that you should probably think about this for a little bit. Wow, not very good at drawing pause buttons anymore. And we'll pause it right now. I'm serious, I think this probably did pause. You should probably think about how to do this. I'll tell you, but not after you do it. Not until after you do it. Wow. Okay. Next up, I want to figure out how to combine these guys, and I noticed that there are only seconds down in the denominator right there. So I'm going to square this so we can get seconds squared in the denominator. So I'm going to argue that A has to be VT squared, but that gives me meters squared per second squared. See? But I only have meters per second squared, so I got to divide by R. Turns out that this is entirely true and there aren't any factors of two or pi or e sitting around. Those could be there because two and pi and e don't have units. <clears throat> so dimensional analysis can get us dependences in an equation, but uh, doing a unit analysis solution like this doesn't always get us factors of e and two, but there aren't any in this case. So if you want another justification, I'll put a, a link to the other video that, uh, that goes through why that's true. But at least we can write that down and sort of say, okay, fair enough, if it's going twice as fast in the same circle, it's gonna require four times the acceleration. Oh, that's a big deal. Interesting. And when I say things like require the acceleration, I guess I'm kind of hinting at mass times centripetal acceleration being equal to centripetal force. And centripetal force then would have to be four times as big if something was going twice as fast. Now what about if the radius decreased? Would that require more force or less force? Assuming that the speed's gonna stay the same, the radius decreases. You think about whether that would need more force or less force. And I just want you to reflect one more time on the fact that circles are really weird and they require this centripetal force, which has to be continuously changing directions. But from the local perspective of, for instance, our truck driver, the centripetal force on him is always to his left. And so he always turns to the left at a constant rate, giving him a constant acceleration. Not speeding up, not speeding down. <laughs> speeding down gives you <clears throat> uniform circular motion.